Hi guys, Sonia Ash here. Today I want to talk about sky replacement techniques. There are many out there. Um, today I want to talk about one that works really well with blown out skies, kind of like the one we're looking at right here. So let's go on over. I've got a sky open and this is a new, um, this is one from our new cloud overlay set called Sunset Skies. So I've got my move tool selected. I'm going to drag from here, drag up to my photo tab, come back down to my canvas and let it drop on. You can see it's much bigger um, than my image area. So the first thing we're going to do is let's change the uh, layer mode to multiply. That allows us to sort of see through this. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to scale this down. So we can do control T on the keyboard and we're going to scale this down and we don't have to worry too much uh, about proportions with skies because there's a lot of leeway with skies. Um, you can drag them out, you can stretch them up and down and that's fine. What we do want to worry about here is the light source. So let's move this up a little bit. You can see our light source on our image is right of sort of in this area here. What we want to do is we want to match up the light source in the cloud overlay and get it right in about that position. So let's position our sun right about there and then <clears throat> we'll just want to make this much bigger and sort of get it right about in where we need it. So I think that might be pretty good right about there. So hit enter on the keyboard. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a layer mask to this overlay. So let's add a mask. And we're going to use our gradient tool. Um, the gradient tool will, will allow us to sort of ramp this up and just sort of get rid of this hard edge just to go up to the horizon. So choose your gradient tool. Make sure that your foreground is black, which it is. And then we want to make sure in our options we choose foreground to transparent. Click OK. Once you have that, make sure you're selected in your mask. Come on over to the canvas and you want to drag up right from about right under where this edge is and just go up slightly. And you can go up, do it a few times. We just want to get rid of that hard edge just to get a little bit of softness there. Okay, That's probably pretty good right about there. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to um, remove it from parts of your subject that you don't, you wouldn't want to see the sky on, like this little girl. So we're going to come down to our background photo layer. We're going to grab our quick selection tool. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And then we can just select the pieces, the parts of her, where we don't want the sky to be on top of her. So it's pretty much just going to be her hat and the tops of her arms here. Okay, so we just want to create this selection. And what we're going to do with this selection is we're going to add it to our mask selection up here. So let's, now that we have this selection here, we're going to click back up into the mask and we want to add black to that mask. So that means we want to fill this selection with black. And I can see I missed a little piece right here, so I'm going to go back and just add that in. Okay, so coming back to the layer mask, we're going to fill it, fill with black. And you can see that it took that off of her body. All right, let's deselect that. Control D on your keyboard will deselect your selection. Now, what we want to do is we want to probably refine this mask somewhat. So we have the mask selected. Right click, refine mask. And we just kind of want to soften up the edges so that they're not hard on there. So I would say let's feather this just somewhat, very slightly. And it, this is, could be different for every photo, but that's how this one seems to be playing out. And we're going to increase the mask somewhat. Let's see. We don't want to go too much with this. You can see this sort of going over a little bit there. Maybe I'll come back just a little. And we're right in the middle is going to be good. 
Okay, and maybe just a little bit of contrast to sharpen up her hand there. <clears throat> okay, so let's accept that right now. Okay, so let's zoom out on this so we, we can see what we're looking at right now. All right, so I would, would at this point, let's set our um, opacity at about 70%. Let me bring that down. And you can play with the layer modes as well. Um, I tend to like darker color on this one because I think it makes it a little bit more believable down here. But it's entirely um, up to you what choice. So I'm just going to go back to darker color. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to look at um, the, folk, the uh, depth of field. So we can see that this is very blurry out here, yet our sky, our clouds are a little too in focus. So we want to make sure to make that believable that we need to have those match somewhat. So we're going to make sure that we're clicked on our sky layer. We're going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and choose a blur setting that blurs it enough. That's obviously way too much. But you'll want to play with that. Bring it back down until you feel like, you know, this is pretty believable. I think I kind of like the five. So a five blur right there is going to be pretty good. Now, this, uh, for all intents and purposes, is, is done for the most part. But I want to show you something that I think is important. When you look at the um, overlay here with the mask, there's a lock layer in the middle of it. Now that means that the mask is locked with this layer. If we unlock that, now all of a sudden, if we're in our layer part and we have our move tool selected, we can move our layer around anywhere we want and that mask stays in place. Now I think that's important in sky replacement because you might want to play around with it a little bit and get a, a different feel. So we could go back even and transform it again. So control T. And let's just see what happens when we change this up somewhat. And maybe we want to bring in a little bit more of that nice imagery at the top. Maybe we want to scale it down somewhat. And then once you like that, hit enter on your keyboard, and that will accept the, the transformation. And you know you can go back, go ahead and go back and lock up your layer again, and then they'll they'll move around like they should. I'm gonna hit Control C because we really don't want to do that. Um, and then you know at this point it's all a matter of taste. You know maybe you want to bring this down just a little bit. You know um, maybe 60% is a little bit more believable for this. You know, maybe maybe even 50 on this, and I just love how this gives this composition just just a little bit. We don't want to go overboard with the clouds because I think that screams that it's been photoshopped. So be very subtle about your clouds, and I think that you'll create beautiful compositions. Mm -hmm.